Well, hello, welcome back. We've got another night of talking about graphs of f prime. So let's dive into our first example. Now, I've stolen this from an old AP question, so you'll notice that this is from 2003 AP Calculus a AB, uh, free response question 4. And I just want to make a note that question 4 means no calculator is allowed, and you'll have to know those by number. Anyway, it says let f be a function defined on the closed interval, negative 3 to 4, and here's our initial condition, f of 0 equals 3. The graph of f prime, the derivative of f, consists of one line segment and a semicircle as shown below. So again, I know it says the graph of f prime, I'm just being very clear, this is a graph of the derivative. Now we'll answer some questions that go along with it. If you think you're strong enough to do it without a sign chart, I'm going to encourage you to give it a whirl. If you need to make a sign chart, pause it and go ahead. So again, I'm going to do it without a sign chart. That's our goal eventually. But if you can do it, you know, if you need the sign chart, just slow down and do it. All right, so I'm going to start with my justification. On what interval, intervals is f increasing? So my justification, f is increasing when f prime of x is greater than 0. Can you just look at this picture and tell me when f prime, that's who you're staring at, is greater than 0? Well, that just means you have a what type of value? Positive. I would say this graph is positive in this section. So I'm going to say from negative 3 to negative 2. All right. So again, hopefully your sign chart matched that up. Um, you don't want to get these wrong. They're easy questions. Just make a sign chart if you can't see that. Question B. Find the x-coordinate of each point of inflection on the graph of f on the open interval and justify your answer. All right, so again, I start with the justification and then it's easier to think about what I want. A point of inflection happens when f double prime changes signs. All right, so now I know what my lo I'm looking for. I have a game plan. I need to know when f double prime changes signs. Well, I say, okay, if this is f prime and I want f double prime, I am now looking at the slope. To get from f prime to f double prime, I need the slope. So I'm just going to go through and I'm going to look at everybody's slopes. This whole section has a slope that is negative. Then my slope is positive. Then my slope is negative. So the question says, when do I have a point of inflection? Well, when did my slopes change signs? I would say at x equals 0 and x equals 2. And I already have my justification there, f double prime change signs. Question C. Find an equation for the tangent line to the graph of f at the point 0, 3. Alright, so here's what I say to myself. To write the equation of a line, and that's the word that sticks out, I need the point slope formula. I need a point and I need a slope. Now they were generous enough to tell me the whole point. So basically all you need is the slope. Now what's another way to say slope? Well slope is equivalent to f prime. And who did they give you a graph of? Well they gave you f prime. So all you're doing is you're looking at your picture, okay, and you want the slope, you want the slope right when you are at the point x equals 0. All right, now since this is a graph of x prime, I literally go to x equals 0, and I see where my slope is sitting. It is at a height of negative 2. So I would say y minus 3 equals negative 2 times x minus 0. Now don't waste your time cleaning it up. The AP doesn't want that. Um, if you make a mistake after you write the equation, you're going to lose your points. So just leave it at this point. All right, so again, let me just explain what I did. I said I needed the slope at the point 0, 3. So I said this is a graph of slope. This is slope. It is f prime. So I just went to when x equals 0, and it had a height of negative 2. Therefore, that's my slope. All right, so this next question you'll notice again is from a 2006 Calculus AB exam, form B, uh, question 2, which question 1 and 2 are calculator active, which means you're allowed to use your calculator. So it says let f be a function defined for all x values greater than 0, with f of 0 equaling 5, and f prime, the derivative of f, given by this function. The graph of f prime is shown below. All right, so they give you the function, and they happen to sketch it for you, which is very generous. So again, I just want to be very clear that we have a graph of f prime. So let's answer three questions about it. When does f have a relative max? And let's justify. So again, I'm going to start with my justification. Anytime I see the word max or min, I know I'm looking at the first derivative. And if I have a max, what happened? f prime changed from... 
positive to negative. All right, so now I just have to look for that to happen. Again, if you need to make yourself a quick sign chart, go ahead, pause it and do it. Otherwise, our goal is to, again, eventually be able to just look at this graph and know. Once I have my justification, it should be fairly obvious. F prime changes from positive to negative. Well, let's look at F prime. What are your F prime values here? Okay, because this is F prime, I'm just looking to see where I'm sitting. My F prime values are positive, then they're negative, then they're positive. So I have a max when F prime changes from, we said, positive to negative. So I'm going to label those points. Right here, when F prime changed from positive to negative, I want to make a note that I have a max of F. And right here, where F prime changed from negative to positive, I have a min on F. So I would answer this question at X equals 2. And of course, my justification is right there. Question 2. Is F concave up, down, or neither on the interval 1.7 to 1.9? So again, let's talk about our justification. Who are we talking about when we see concavity? We're talking about F double prime. Now, I don't know at the moment what I am to zero. Let's take a look. We want to zone in on the section 1.7 to 1.9. Now, where does that fall? Well, first of all, 1.7 and 1.9 are definitely before the number 2. So I would say I'm looking in this general area here. Okay, 1.7 to 1.9. Now, if I want F double prime, and I have F prime, what are you going to look at? That's what has to go through your head. I have F prime. I need F double prime. I'm looking at the slopes. This question is all now looking at slopes. So if you were to draw tangent lines in that section, that whole section, 1.7 to 1.9, what would you say you have a slope of? I would say my slope is less than 0. Therefore, my function is concave down. Now, in my mind, we've attacked the two easy questions. Here's the nasty question. It says, find the value of x at which f has an absolute max. Let's get that in our book there. Absolute max. That word has to jump off the page at you, and that is now saying we make our t-chart. Okay, so let's again talk through that. I have my x values. This always goes back to the original on an absolute. The one thing we want to put in our books is that we always include the endpoints and critical points. I need two things on my t-chart, endpoints and critical points. Uh, they told us we were x values greater than or equal to zero. So there's my first endpoint. My next critical point, remember a critical point is where your derivative equals zero. And since this was a graph of the derivative, it equaled zero right here and right here. Now. Neither of those are points I know exactly, and this is why it's calculator active. We actually have to graph that in our calculator and figure out what those points are. So I graphed this in my calculator and took a quick snapshot. Now I want you to jot some things down. Obviously, we're getting to about the time of the year we're going to start finding how to use our calculator. Um, so it's about time that you find it, bring it in, and we can update what we need to. The first thing I want you to put in your notebook about your calculator, a couple things here. Our whole course is in radian mode. All right, so you can think back to Algebra 2 Trig where you had to switch back and forth. This whole course is in radian mode. Now, however, if you're a physics student, I believe you do that whole course in degree mode. So if you take physics and calc, you really got to be aware of what mode you're in. Second, this whole course is three decimal places. Okay, you never have to ask, you never have to guess, it's never going to tell you. It's an automatic three decimal places. And again, we'll talk about how to use our calculator um, in the next couple of days or so. But anyways, I've graphed this function, and I had to find what we call the zeros. Hopefully you remember that from your Algebra 2 days. We had to use the zero function on our calculator. So that first critical point is 1.772. Now I'm not going to take another picture, but again, I went and got the other zero, which is where my derivative equals zero. And that point was... 2.507. All right, so I suggest dig out that calculator. Like I said, we're going to do a lot with it pretty soon um, and try to play with that on your own. Now, we needed an endpoint, and the directions didn't tell us it ended at 3, but if you notice our graph, our graph did end here at 3, so I'm going to put a 3 on as my endpoint. Now, Remember, we're plugging all of these into f of x. Do we actually know any values of f of x? Well, if I scroll back to my directions, they did tell us f of 0 is 5. So that is actually the one value that I do know on this function. 
And in fact, I don't know any other value. And at the moment, it's not possible for me to find those values until we start our second half of the year. So we're going to have to make an assumption based off this graph. So I want you to think about what's happening. And in fact, I'm going to grab that graph again and put it below so we can have a nicer picture. So let's take a look at this graph. I know that my function starts, basically, if I were to sketch out regular f at 0, it basically starts at 5. Okay, at 0, I know I have a height of 5. Now I have to figure out where this is going to be absolutely the highest, hence the word absolute max. And I got to think about what f prime is doing. Since, and here's what has to go through your head, since f prime, this is a graph of f prime, since f prime is above the x-axis here, it means this whole time my function is increasing. Then when it's below the x-axis, my function is decreasing. And then again, when it's above the x-axis, my function is increasing. So here's what's happening. f starts at 0, 5, and it does a lot of increasing. And then it gets to a max, we said. Remember, we called this a max, because f prime changed from positive to negative. It increases, it gets to its max, and now it decreases. It gets to its min, and then it increases. Now the question is, where did, were you the highest? Where do you have this absolute max? And here's again what you have to think. Did you do more increasing, or did you do more decreasing? Basically, I want you to think of it as like area under the curve. Do you have more area in this section, or more area in this section? Hopefully it's very clear that there's more area here. So what that tells me is you did a lot of increasing, okay, and then you did a little bit of decreasing, and then you increased some more. Now think about this. Did you do more increasing in this section or in this section? I would say certainly in this section looks a lot bigger than this section. So again, as I sketch this, I'm saying I did a lot of increasing, I did a little decreasing, and then I did a little increasing. All right, so I would say my highest value is right here. So again, I'm not going to actually have numbers to put in here, but I do know that my absolute max occurs at this point. Okay, what I can put at 2.507 507 is that if you look at my graph here, we know we had a what here? We said f prime changed from negative to positive, so we know that's a min. I don't need to waste my time figuring that out. I know it's a min. So in my justification, I would say I have a max at x equals 1.772, and my justification is actually f F did more increasing than decreasing. F did a lot more increasing than decreasing. Well, I know that was a lot to take in, um, but like I said, you know, we're getting to the nitty gritty. We're halfway, almost halfway through the course, um, and it'll just take a lot of practice. Feel free to pause and rewind when you need to. Lastly, I want to put it all together, and I've. Uh, Design this little diagram for you if you want to do maybe like a screenshot and tape it in your notebook or copy it down, um, but one of them should be in there. Basically, this is kind of your cheat sheet. When you're talking about extrema, okay, and of course that means maxes and mins, all right, you are using f prime when it equals zero or is undefined. You have a relative max when f prime changes from positive to negative, and a relative min when f prime changes from negative to positive. Concavity is all about the second derivative. Concave up, my justification is f double prime is greater than zero. Concave down, f double prime is less than zero. Points of inflection, again, about the second derivative. f double prime equals zero, or f double prime is undefined. And here's my justification. f double prime changes signs at that point. Note, if there is no sign change, then there is no point of inflection. So just a quick reminder of everything we've put together. Well, that does it for tonight, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow.